What's up, guys? It's Andrew with MyWatchAddiction.com coming back to you with a state of the collection. Now, because my collection is relatively good size, can't fit it all in one video, today I'm simply going to focus on the watches I've purchased via Kickstarter, the crowdfunding platform. Now, if you've watched any of my channels before, you know that I've backed quite a number of projects. And uh, stick around in this video and you'll see which ones have remained in the collection and which ones have moved on. If you want to learn more about these watches individually, up in the upper right hand corner of the screen will be the link to their unboxing and or review video. Guys, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below on what you think might be your favorite watch in this collection. first watch we're going to take a look at is the X-Frame Seer from the Umbrella Watch Group. Now this was one of my very first Kickstarter backings. I had such high hopes for it. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the red and black, that, that geometric shape, those hard edges, um, and then of course it's chronograph. I absolutely fell in love with it, but as you'll see in the video in the upper right hand corner, just not a good start to my Kickstarter watch collection. The second hand fell off the day that I got the watch. It took way too long to get. The creator was shady as hell, but still kind of an interesting looking watch. second watch we're going to take a look at is the RG9003 from Griffin Emblem. Now one thing I will point out real quick guys, I'm going in the order that I acquire these watches, not necessarily the order of the ones that I like the most or dislike, um, just simply the order that I got them. And with that being said, this Griffin Emblem is one of my more preferred watches in my collection. Um, I'm a huge fan of that Miyota 9100 movement with the power reserve and then of course the Roman numeral design on the dial. Just a really, really sharp and comfortable watch for me. Goes great with suits, with, you know, casual wear. Doesn't matter what I'm wearing it with. I, I'm a big fan of this one. Next up is the Carbon Renegade from Rival Collective. Pick this guy up for 173 bucks from Kickstarter. It's quartz retrograde movement, Miyota uh, retrograde movement in it. Kind of a cool looking watch. I don't really have anything pros or cons too big to say about this one. The one thing you will notice is I am rocking a Bandai strap on it. I changed out the strap that it came with just because the strap that was on it was was pretty cheap and didn't feel all that great on the wrist. So I swapped out the strap but was able to find one with decent colors. This JSK series from Elegantis. I don't know how to pronounce these watch company names, so bear with me, but this is actually a collaboration between Elegantis and JSK Motor Company. You can notice that uh, there is a retro moto design collaboration to it. Um, they really talked that aspect up in their Kickstarter campaign. This guy ran for about 600 bucks. One thing I will point out is this watch doesn't get a whole lot of wear simply because of its size. This guy is rocking a, what, almost 48 millimeters, 47 millimeters, something like that. Um, and on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this guy just feels a little bit too big. You can almost see it there um, in this wrist roll shot of that 24 millimeter strap um, and that watch. Just a really big watch. Aesthetically, I don't mind it at all. I, I like the gun metal, but the size is an issue. Rolling directly into the arsenal from, I'm not even gonna pronounce this watch company's name because I don't speak Italian, but 
This one is a really cool design. It reminds me a lot of the old out of order watches that Watch Kane used to send out quite a bit. It's got kind of that uh, distressed look and feel to it, especially with that distressed leather strap. It's a very, very comfortable watch to wear. Um, goes great with a pair of jeans, um, polo, whatever you're wearing, t-shirt, whatever. Just a really, really cool watch. The one thing I will say is the hands in it, when you're setting the time and such on it, um, it feels a little bit loose. Uh, the fit and finish of it, I don't think is 100%, but it's a, it's a definitely a comfortable watch to wear and one that I wear quite a bit. The Apex JT from Avum Timepieces is one of the first watches that I actually purchased on Kickstarter that I had the opportunity to talk to the brand owner. His name's Brian. At the time, he was out of Toronto. I believe he might have moved to Japan now. I know he's heavily into the uh, car racing industry and custom fabrication industry, that type of thing. So a lot of a lot of the Avum Timepieces. Um, have have that racing tie to it and you see it here within this apex gt with the gt logo right there on the tang real clean small very comfortable watch to wear um i don't have anything negative to say about this one whatsoever it's been a great little watch for me with that seiko nh35 movement in it Up next is the Blenheim London Navigator with the Miyota 8215. If you guys actually watched the unboxing video for this one, I was pretty harsh on this brand when I first got it, primarily because the specs that they listed in their Kickstarter campaign did not match what they actually shipped. One of the things that was big for me is they promised a much thinner watch case um, and this one turned out to be pretty hefty. So they had their specs wrong when they when they put together the uh, Kickstarter campaign. And I, I lit into them pretty good about it. I know Dennis, the brand owner, had reached out to me a bunch of times to try and get me to review some of their other watches. Not that I had anything negative against it. It just wasn't anything that I was into at the time. Um, but this is one of those watches that I originally hated, but has actually stuck around in the collection and gotten a fair amount of wrist time with. Next up is actually the VF84 Skull from OVD Watches. This is the first watch that I backed from OVD Watches. Um, love that skull design, love that spinning rotor for a second hand. And the overall design of this watch is something that I just, to this day, I still think is really cool. Now, it is something that I wear primarily casually. I don't usually wear this watch to work at all. Um, but I do love this watch. And this watch itself is the one that really got me excited about the, the brand OVD watches. Um, you know, I... I compare them a little bit to Zurich watches in the respect that they come out with some pretty crazy designs, but OVD watches by far, the fit and finish is so much better, so much better. They just make a great, great product and I'm happy to have a number of their watches in my collection. That brings us to the phase one from stage watches with the Swiss Lita SW200 movement. This guy came in at about $385 shipped. This, this watch is another one that gets a lot of wrist time. This one I do actually wear to work quite a bit. Um, wear a lot of blue in my day-to-day -day life. So, uh, 
you know, the blue complementing in the stitching and the the dial and crown, um, you know, is just something that fits really well. Very, very comfortable watch. I'm not sure if this company is still in business. Matter of fact, I think a few of these companies are no longer in business. Um, but, you know, I'm still glad to have it in my collection. There wasn't a whole lot of these made, so you don't see a whole lot of them floating around out there in the watch groups. But uh, I am happy to have one on my wrist. And here's the Angel Falls Diver from Mondragon Watches with a Seiko NH35 automatic movement in it. You guys probably noticed a couple videos ago I had this as the watch of the day. This guy does not get a whole lot of wrist time simply due to its thickness and its size. I don't really have anything negative to say about this watch other than, you know, it's very... It's very clunky in the respect that it's a it's a big watch and uh, you definitely feel it on the wrist. Now this guy did come with a number of straps in the Kickstarter campaign. I do have the carbon fiber looking strap on it here. <laughs> Um, but it did come with an engineering stainless steel bracelet as well that I swap out every once in a while. Ah, uh, yes, the Boulder Expedition. This was actually the first watch that introduced me to the Boulder watch brand. This is called the Iger model. Um, and unfortunately for this video, I didn't get any loom shots, but this is a full face loomed watch. Um, so readability and uh, just overall aesthetics on this thing are great. The canvas strap takes a beating. And uh, if you notice, when I flip it around, you'll see it's a 007 or 007 serial number um, on this watch. I was super stoked to get that. Why? I'm not sure. I just thought it was cool. But I've reviewed a number of Boulder watches on this channel, and they just make a great product. It's solid. Um, you know, this is a very comfortable watch to wear, and uh, I've had a lot of luck with this one, and I'm glad it's in the collection. So this JW01 watch from JW Mechanical is just one of those watches that my taste wanes and varies on. Like some days I think it's really cool, other days I feel like it's a piece of junk. Um, it just really, really depends on the mood that I'm in the, in, in the day. I mean, aesthetically it looks really nice. It does feel a little bit cheap um, on the wrist. Very, very light watch. Um, but from an aesthetic standpoint, it's a very interesting design, kind of offset there with the second hand and how the uh, how the hours and everything are accounted for. Is, it takes a little bit to get used to. Next, we're on to the coronation from Moon, Bron Wa Moon Bronze Watches. It's got a Swiss Lita SW200. This guy was early on in my backing career, um, but this watch was also one of the last watches that I actually had delivered. This watch was extremely delayed due to some uh, supplier as well as vendor problems, brand owner issues, that type of thing, but they really came through on this watch. Um, this watch from a comfort level is extremely, extremely comfortable. I love the design to it. I love that kind of almost not necessarily checkered, but that that um, detailed dial and then that hexagonal shape to the overall watch design I think is just something really cool. This is probably one of my preferred watches in my Kickstarter collection right now. Um, definitely something I really, really enjoy.
Speaking of watch companies that aren't in business anymore, this is the Neon Automatic from Hinton Watches. Um, this is a watch that I had backed early on. The brand owner was heavily active in the Facebook watch community. Um, and then after this watch, uh, they had a couple follow-up Kickstarter campaigns. After this watch, he just kind of disappeared. Like I, I think there's a lot of hate for this brand right now. Um, this watch itself, I don't really mind. I wear a fair amount, um, but that, that clasp has got a very, very thick height to it, I guess we'll say. Um, so it catches on the desk it's it's you know it's one of those watches that is nice to wear every once in a while but it's not something i would wear on a daily basis at all the san diego titanium from collar and sons is one of the first titanium watches that i ever purchased and I had no previous experience with titanium watches, and it, it blew my mind how light this watch was. Now, for me, unfortunately, at the time, I equate heaviness, lightness to cheap or inexpensive, um, not well built. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. But, you know, this is one of those watches that aesthetically looks good. It looks good on the wrist. It fits well. It's very light. It's just... I, I don't know. There's something about this watch. I just have, it feels a little bit cheap to me. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure I would have bought this one again now that I've seen this on the wrist. This brings us to the LC1 from Arcturus Watches with a Miyota 9132 automatic movement in it. This guy came in at a whopping $500, but which was a little high from a cost standpoint. But when I actually got this watch in my hands, I fell in love with this. That inlaid mother of pearl dial with those Roman numeral indices. Um, and then just the overall aesthetics of this watch. Um, this is one of those watches that I really, really like. You can see right there, this is the serial number two of 100 made in this color combination. So there's only 100 of these guys out there in this color combination. And we have the second one. Really, really, really dig this watch. And I would happily purchase this one over and over and over again. Whoever thought they could make a titanic infused watch. Now this is another one of those OVD watch creations that I have in my collection. You can see the rotor back on the back side there is supposed to be indicative of the anchor from the titanic. It's got that rusted treatment to it. Um, overall, I do like this watch, have had no problems with it whatsoever, and I'm, I'm glad I made the purchase. It doesn't receive a whole lot of uh, wear, just from an aesthetic standpoint. It's, it's not one that I think to go to all the time, but it is a watch that's in my collection that I do enjoy having, and I'm glad I purchased. The Okanos Explorer from Hiedis Watches is one of those watches that I had to back, I had to support because it was designed and developed in Buffalo, New York. Anybody that knows me knows I am in New York State, so I happily back and support uh, New York State companies as well, and this is one of those purchases that uh, goes to that point. This, this dive watch is very much an homage to um, many of the dive watches that you see out there, but just the, the customer service and the overall attention to detail that this company gives is, is one that I appreciate. And this, this Okanos Explorer is something that is going to stick around in my collection for a while. This 
This is the Advanced from Avum Timepieces. Came in at $271. You can see this one is just like the Apex GT that I showed you guys earlier. This is another one from Avum uh, Timepieces that has a very, very close tie to the automotive industry and the racing industry in general. This watch is no different. Here's something that's kind of different that you don't see in every day. This is the Earth Dweller from Neminus Watches. Swiss Lita SW200-1 automatic movement in this guy. You can see right around the same time, there's a whole bunch of watch companies that came out with um, space and exploration expired wa inspired watches. And uh, this Earth Dweller is definitely one of them. Now, there was a number of different um, models or stylings that you could get this model in. I think they had a Mars Dweller or something like that. I went with the Earth Dweller. Um, again, this is another one of those watches that sits really tall on the wrist uh, just due to the case thickness. And, uh, you know, from a comfort standpoint, isn't all that great. Um, like, I wouldn't say this is a comfortable watch to wear. However, what I will say is this is definitely a conversation starter. Um, this is probably one of the one of the most talked about pieces when people see me wearing it. Um, I do get a lot of questions on this piece. This was probably by far one of the worst watch purchases I made on Kickstarter is the Alpiner X from Alpine Watches. Now, this was a hybrid watch um, that had both uh, analog display as well as digital smartwatch capabilities, you know, the whole nine yards. Had a lot going for it. Pretty expensive, um, over $500 for this guy. Um, and you can see right there, it's not even on, the battery's dead in it. This guy promised a two-year battery life, and I think I got maybe a week and a half out of it. Um, I've replaced the battery myself, and I usually get about a week out of the battery on this. Definitely was not worth the money, and I would absolutely not buy that watch again. Next up is the Bomber from Hellgrey Watches. Now. This bomber was the first purchase I had with Hellgrey. Um, didn't have a whole lot of experience with them in the past, um, but I was attracted to the aesthetics of it. Um, you guys know me, I love red and black. This watch fit a lot of my criteria. It's very comfortable to wear. This Hellgrey bomber actually gets a fair amount of wrist time, um, and I am definitely glad I have it in my collection. Here we go with the Mirid, I, I can't pronounce this, this GMT from the Italian watch company that uh, I had backed earlier with the Arsenal. Really cool looking aesthetic on this watch. I love the GMT, I love that, that case design. This watch, however, had a large amount of hate around the Kickstarter campaign because partway through the Kickstarter, after everybody had placed their bids and purchases and their their backings were all locked in the company actually changed the movement that was in this watch it was originally supposed to have a eta gmt movement in it and they changed it to a salita at the last minute i believe due to supply chain issues but um they caught a lot of flack for that with this watch 
Um, it's one of those watches that, you know, it's comfortable. I wear a fair amount. Um, don't have any hate towards it. As far as the movement concerns, I understand people's anger about it. I personally don't have a preference. Um, here we go, guys. Another watch from OVD Watches. I told you I had a fair number in my collection that I do really, really like this watch brand. Um, this is the Mars mission, uh, very similar to the Earth Dweller I showed you a couple minutes ago. This came out around the time when a lot of the watch companies were doing space exploration themed watches. Um, and this guy is no different. The one thing I will point out about this is it does have a very domed dial to it because of that 3D dial design. Um, sits pretty high off the wrist so makes it a little bit uncomfortable but it's it's just a really really cool watch and then under the loom that that planet in the middle there actually glows red which of course for me is a huge plus I promise guys we're starting to wind down here Thanks for sticking with me. This is the Vigilante from Hellgrey Watches. Um, very similar to that bomber um, that we, I showed you a few minutes ago. Uh, the red and black design. This is an automatic watch. Now this came out with a time when they were pitching a quad zoned uh, GMT watch. I believe it was a quartz that came out with this this campaign at the same time that this automatic did but i decided to go with the automatic one on this backing this watch actually gets a fair amount of wear um very comfortable just a very casual watch to wear no concerns no problems whatsoever this brings us to the sentinel from ferros watches now this is one of those watches that I didn't really know a whole lot about the company. I still don't know a whole lot about the company, but didn't really know a whole lot about the company when I backed them. I just thought it was a cool looking watch. The one thing I will point out about this is this machined case on this watch has some pretty sharp edges. And by sharp, I mean the edges are pretty pronounced. So it's not always the most comfortable watch to wear, um, especially as you brush your hand against the, the watch case, that type of thing. Um, the one thing I will say about this watch is that is a full loom dial also. So aesthetically, um, readability at night is great on this guy. Next up in the collection is the Torsk Diver from Sal Baltimore Watches. Now, this Sal Baltimore brand is a brand that I was turned on to actually by Wade over at the Watch and Channel. Um, Wade was a backer of their first Kickstarter campaign and got me kind of hooked on Sal Baltimore as a watch company in general. Since then, I've talked to a uh, brand owner a fair amount and I'm happily back them with any of their projects going forward. This watch specifically was part of one of their more recent campaigns and uh, it was kind of a special Kickstarter add-on with that PVD coating um, and the meteorite dial. The typical Torsk diver does not come in this color combo or this dial. Um, that was a special offering and that's also why it was a little bit more on the more expensive side uh, as you saw in the beginning slide. All right, guys, full disclosure, this Darkwater 300 from Kingsbury Watch Company was an accidental or we'll call it drunken purchase. Um, I actually placed the, the backing on this one one night after I had been drinking and was perusing Kickstarter. I have no concerns about this watch whatsoever. Actually, it's very comfortable on the wrist. Um, there's, uh, you know, really nothing negative that I can say about it. It's a great looking watch, great fitting watch. Um, there's just no real wow factor to it. 
So I would say, you know, I'm glad I backed it. If I would back it again, I'm honestly not so sure, but um, I'm glad it's still in the collection. And finally, that brings us to the Mikados from Valamor Watches. This guy is rocking an STP 6-15 automatic movement in it. This guy cost me about $400. Um, one of the things that I love about this watch is kind of that, that scalloped dial. The overall aesthetics of this watch, I really, really, really like. Um, from, from a feel and look standpoint, I think this is probably one of my more preferred watches in my Kickstarter collection. The only negative thing that I have to say about it is because when I ordered this or when I, when I filled out the survey in the Kickstarter, I had a lot of other color watches. I didn't have anything this color, um, so I figured I'd go with this color in the dial on this one. Fun fact, I really don't have a whole lot of clothes that match with this watch, so it doesn't get a whole lot of wrist time, which is a shame because aesthetically, I do love the design, especially those stainless steel indices and that open heart dial design. Okay hey guys, if you want to see all the watches I backed on Kickstarter, you can visit mwalinks.com slash Kickstarter and that'll take you directly to my profile. Thanks for watching guys.